Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but Hello, we're too numb to ask. Hello, Hello I'm General Dentist smile. Dr. Kavitko, and thank, thank you for joining me today. The following in. views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. Thank you so much for joining me. This is episode 672, and today we're going to have a frank discussion about opioid addiction. Uh, but before we do that, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko, and if you please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Um, before we get to that, I want to kind of uh, mention that my wife and I launched an Airbnb uh, in early in November, and it's going really well, and, and uh, if you have friends or family that are coming to town for a visit and are interested, they could um, look up the Mad Cat Inn, okay, the Mad Cat Inn. Uh, we're having a lot of fun with it, we're getting great reviews, five-star reviews, and uh, getting to meet a lot of new friends, so it's really cool. Okay, now, opioid addiction. Uh, let me just the say that um, the State Dental Board of Ohio uh, recently made it a law that every dentist pills, has to have uh, um, they would be out of training. After every two years, we have to have two. training in opioid addiction. And uh, so, you know, why is that? It's because it's a continuing and issue. And, of course, dentistry's role in that would, would be if we are prescribing too many pills, if we're prescribing too much medication, maybe more than a person might need for what exactly they're having done. Okay, yeah, so in the addition, in you know, an, exa an example so, would be, um, let's say I take out four impacted was, wisdom teeth for a person, and I have to figure out just how many, uh, uh, how many um, pain pills would be appropriate for them. Okay, but then it and um, it turns out that uh, we dentists and physicians alike, we were prescribing more than was needed, and so people would use the pills. Uh, they so no longer, the they would be out of pain after uh, a day and a half or two, the and then they'd have all these leftover pills, and they would sit in their medicine cabinet, and people were getting a hold of them. Sometimes it would be the grandson or granddaughter of a person who'd come over to visit, and they'd go up to use the restroom and look in the medicine cabinet, and lo and behold, hey, there's some pills there. I might take them. Grandma didn't even know about it. Grandpa didn't even know about it. And so... Um, that up what was, happened was is there was a point had, at uh, which the, the number of accidental deaths go down, I think uh, was that we experienced, it used to be, by the and way, was, car accidents, the but then it became this. This is a brand new addiction. It became accidental and overdoses. And that's and when people like raise their eyebrows and go, what the heck is going on here? Okay. So oftentimes when I get home, my wife... She puts on the television just for background noise, and she has this show called Air Disasters. Maybe you've seen it. They recreate these plane crashes, and they try to figure out what went wrong, you know, what can we learn from it. Was it pilot error? Was it mechanical error? And it's always very tragic, and, um, but it does kind of suck you in, you know? You want to kind of learn about this. And so the reason I'm bringing that up is, you remember when we had uh, the first 737 which is uh, Max more, plane go down, I think it was an uh, Ethiopian airline. And it was, I remember seeing the images because I'm looking at this, this is a brand new jet. How could that have uh, crashed? You know, what happened? And I think people thought it was pilot error for quite a while until a second one went down. And that's when everybody got everybody's attention, right? Because now we have so two brand new planes that, that went down within about, I think it was four to five months of each other. She's a dentist. She was the well, I'm bringing this up because uh, uh, a 737 yeah, MAX airplane speech, she holds 
189 people. I don't know. Ohio has the second highest rate of opioid addiction in the nation. Nationally, 192 people die every day of an opioid overdose. 192 people, which is three more than is on a Max 737 jet. Now, remember, I mean, it was worldwide news. We were all up in arms, and we should be about those planes going down. But we should be more up in arms about the fact that the equivalent of the number of people on a 737 MAX jet die every day from opioid addiction. So the course that I took was partially given by Dr. Sharon Parsons. She's a dentist. She was the most recent president of the Ohio Dental Association. And in her speech, she mentioned that she said, I don't know 192 people who've died of addiction, but I know one. And it turns out her 27-year-old son, Sean Herman, died and of an accidental overdose of opioids. They take now, she went on to tell the story about how it began with four pills, that, uh, just four pills, because she, he was going to do, uh, he was going with some friends to do something, uh, you know, that we adults would consider dangerous. I think it might have been uh, four-wheeling or, or something uh, athletic that was going to put him in danger, and she said, Sean, please don't do it. Well, he did it anyway, and he did get injured, but he didn't tell her he did it anyway, and he was afraid to tell her now, that he'd injured himself. And so a buddy said, hey, I've got these four pills I found uh, that uh, my mom didn't, didn't need after she uh, had a root canal. Is, when do you take the first and so he takes the four pills. pills. You know, your brain isn't and that was the beginning of his addiction. Really and um, not everybody has it happen when they take uh, a pill or two. Most people uh, don't. But what we've discovered is that uh, between the ages of so, 13 to 26, was, if you take, in uh, you're five times more likely to become addicted if you take an opioid between that brain. age, those age, so that age range. That so between 13 and 26, um, obviously her son Sean was in that age group when he took those four cortex. pills. 96.5% started their drug abuse before age 21. Uh, we're having, uh, now, I genetics can account say, for about 40 to 70 percent so of uh, somebody says, becoming addicted. You, but uh, happy that I the rest is, pills. when do you take right? the first pill or pills? Um, you know, your brain isn't addicts, fully functional is, yet, it's not completely developed, and uh, says, you know addiction is a complex uh, metabolic um, That's all you need. Uh, <laughs> activity, if you will. But so, in an addict, what happened was, in 2005, the NIH was trying to study the effects of addi addiction on the brain. So you have a couple of things at play. You have the ventral tegmental area, you have the nucleus accumbens, and you have the prefrontal cortex. So the ventral tegmental area is the one that's first stimulated. So let's just say uh, we're having, uh, well, I love frosty, so let's just say I had a frosty. And, and, and so, so I get the stimulation the that says, uh, you, that I'm happy that I ate that frosty. Okay? So, um, one but of the then in addicts, what happens uh, is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, then the prefrontal cortex takes over and it that, says, you know what? what he did was he did one large he frosty is enough. That's all you need. You're fine. <laughs> how many drugs? But he'd given in an addict, the prefrontal cortex loses its control and it doesn't send the message that says you should be happy with one. Uh, frosty, and, he and so he you don't feel satisfied, many, and so you have another, put out. and you have another, now, he was and you have another, what he and you want another, and you keep doing it. You know, when you and so, in the case of the frosty, I'd probably just get overweight. But in the case of um, of opioids, you become addicted, it can cause and and so your brain is constantly uh, looking for that next high. So. One of the oral surgeons that was uh, involved and, uh, in uh, giving so this course, he mentioned that um, what he did was he did, an, when he first learned of this, he did an assessment going, uh, of right how many drugs, that, pain pills, he'd given all, people, just one oral surgeon so that in, that don't even need let's say, a year. Procedure like that. I think he figured out that what it was um, in a year's time. And he, fig he couldn't believe and just how many, how many pills he'd actually put out there. Now, he was doing... What he thought was the right thing, um, because, you know, when you take no four wisdom teeth out of somebody and you cut the gums and you no grind on bone and you cut the teeth into smaller pieces so they come out of those holes, it so can cause that? significant pain and swelling. Better because, but uh, 
the Tylenol. And it still it turns out that well, he was giving people thirty tablets after a surgery. And the ibuprofen and, um, is and an so anti-inflammatory. With all of this new information uh, and all of this that, in, this uh, new knowledge, also works. Uh, so they work the ways. going so uh, understanding right now is that well, first of all, we've done some studies and we've determined that you don't even need an opioid after a procedure like that. Uh, what you do anyway, need the, is a mixture of ibuprofen, 200 milligrams, and an extra strength Tylenol, which is 500 way, milligrams, you can that. You can take two and that will um, same time you work take better two than two any combination of an opioid or a combination of acetaminophen with an opioid or a combination of ibuprofen with an opioid. It actually works better. So why is that? It works better because... And some people uh, don't even the Tylenol, the acetaminophen, so we say, hey, we works on raising your body's threshold before uh, it like feels pain. pain and the case, ibuprofen is an anti-inflammatory and a, and a, and a painkiller that or if you um, feel better having uh, also works. Let's so they work in different ways. So you're, you're controlling the, the pain in two completely different ways. So and together, it's pretty darn good. It's actually great. And so... You know, it's, it's become an uh, eye opener. But anyway, with the with the we opioids, taught, what we figured out is most that, people are you know, fine with the ibuprofen and, and the acetaminophen. And by the way, you can but double that. You can take two um, ibuprofen at the same time. You should take two of the acetaminophen, and you do this every four to six hours or whatever it says on the bottle. <clears throat> this is. Uh, and that this is uh, what we tend to do now is we give people what we call a rescue dose so of six from, and we'll get into opioid that later tablets. On in the, uh, in this six. Discussion. And some people don't even need those. So what we do is we say, hey, we want you to start off with this. Uh, would you like a narcotic painkiller just in case? Because if you don't, you can always call, and we'll call something in. Or if you later, feel better uh, having this prescription, let's make it for six tablets, and you'll have them even in, in the event that you need them. So it's kind of 50-50 what people are selecting these days. And and I think that's, you know, it's it's become an eye-opener because we were taught that, you know, you need to take care of people's pain, and we still believe that, by the way. But we also... Uh, Oxycontin, um, for example, which we're is taught that Percocet. it wasn't something that people could easily addicted. become addicted so to. So when I'm trying to take <coughs> this care is, of uh, this is from uh, you know my dental training. Somebody's pain. I'm thinking, and so that comes from, and we'll get into that later on in the uh, in this discussion. But that comes from what we now know was misinformation really that somehow wormed its but way into the journal of uh, the New England Journal of Medicine. The At least it was reported was that it was in there, was the and the later, uh, recently, in the last several and years, and, it was uh, discovered that it wasn't even an article, it was an opinion, like somebody sent in a letter to the editor, and okay. so then so the drug the companies said, hey, this was in the journal of the New England Journal of Medicine, and so, and we were also taught that only 1% of people who would take OxyContin, for example, which is known as Percocet, what do we call it? Disclaimer? Would become addicted. We're gonna do, we're gonna so when I'm trying to take care of somebody's um, somebody's pain, I'm thinking, let me give them this because only one percent of them could be addicted, and I'm only giving it them to them once for one procedure. This is really safe. But what we decide, what we've now learned, is that um, the person who was putting out that information was on the take from the drug company that made it, and. Um, it's been retracted, but not before we've gotten into this mess, okay? So I'm looking at the clock. I think I forgot to mention, folks, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist, and we're going to do that in just a minute. So stay tuned, because the answer is going to be something you'll easily know. Uh, you're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, and uh, as soon as you listen to this, um, what do we call it, disclaimer, we're going to do, we're going to give you a chance to win the flowers. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kabitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kabitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kabitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's Question of the Day. Okay, and you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They're going to be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The question of the day is... 
We've been speaking about opioid addiction. How many people die each day in the United States from drug addiction related overdoses? Is it A, 10, B, 100, or C, 192, the equivalent of a 737 MAX airplane? All right, the winner's going to receive those free flowers. The number to call is 614 459 9769. That's 614 459 9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said, People don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hi, this is Keith Carlos, former NFL player, actor, and first male winner of America's Next Top Model. I got a question for you. Do you know how many dentists there are between here and Los Angeles? Well, I don't know either, but I fly over every one of them just to see Dr. Kavico on a regular basis. Check out my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavico on my Instagram page, at Keith Carlos. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavico, the world's most compassionate dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavico. Are you tired of hearing what every business is doing to keep you safe? Well, me too, because they're all saying the same thing. Wearing masks, washing our hands often, and social distancing are the keys to keeping us healthy, and all businesses are doing that. But here at Dr. Kavitko and Associates, we do that and more. We have continuous air and surface pathogen reduction units inside our office that kill over 93% of the coronavirus and other pathogens. I bet you can't name another dental office that does that. Give us a call at 614-262-9588 or go to drkavitko.com. Dr. Kavicko, let's go! Hi, I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavicko and Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavicko for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavicko, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today. 614-262-9588. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay, we're back. We have Katie on the line. Hi, Katie. How are you today? I'm good. How are you so much? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for listening and thank you for calling. What's the answer? 192. That's right. And by the way, Katie, uh, Sean, the young man we mentioned uh, that died, he, he was from Dublin. Accidental overdose? Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, you've heard of it. Story before the pandemic. Oh no! Oh, no, okay. I haven't. Yeah, just because uh, Katie's from Dublin, by the way. So I just thought uh, and, and it's so, right in your uh, backyard, the the, the, the genesis it's, it's of the story. So what do you do for a living, Katie? We lost um, I people am a stay-at-home mom. Oh, cool. Oh, that's really but a privilege all, these days to be able to stay home. Yeah, it really yeah. is. So you're you're so lucky. I know you don't feel lucky at times because the kids can be a lot of work. That's right. That's right. But hey, that's what you signed up for, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, stay on the phone, please. We want to get the information where we can send you those flowers from DeSantis, okay? Thank you so much. All right, if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kvitko. This is episode 673 of The Reasons We Smile. Today we're having a frank discussion about opioid addiction, accidental overdose. Uh, it was a big, big story before the pandemic hit, but it's still there, folks, and we still need to be aware of it. And so, um, let's see here. Let me see. Here's some other stats. So in 2015, we lost 31,000 people in car accidents nationwide. But we also but we also lost fifty two thousand uh, to uh, addiction of drugs. There were nine hundred so prescriptions written for every one thousand people in Ohio. Uh, and the rate of, the rate of increase at that time, isn't that something? I, I don't. I think they're talking about individual pills. I don't think they're talking about you know, a piece of paper with a script that says. Um, I think it's not script prescriptions. I think it's pills. Okay. Now. On you average, a thousand people visit the ER, ER because of an overdose. But an overdose, I'm and sorry, a visit to the ER costs about three thousand six hundred and forty dollars. Can anybody do that math? Is so that three hundred sixty-four thousand dollars? Is what that costs society? 
and heroin is mixed up 73,000 people died in 2018 so you see that was up from 52,000 in 2015 impure products almost uh, another uh, one and a half times so the death rate has actually increased five times in just six years so and the rate of the rate of increase of heroin overdose has increased 500 times now why is that to me that to me, that was a little bit of a mistake, and that was brought on by all the new regulation to limit people's access to the opioids, because when you made it harder for them to get pills that we knew were processed and manufactured in a safe way, and, and if it said 50 milligrams, it was 50 milligrams, those addicts had to find another way of getting their fix, and so then they found street drugs. And heroin was one of them. And heroin is mixed up by some crook, some um, drug addict or druggie themselves looking for money, and they may not know how to do it, or they might use uh, impure products or mix it up in a bathtub. And before you know it, people were dying of these drugs because the, the dose wasn't really true. Not just in the US, so but it's all we talk about, I just mentioned so a little bit, the uh, global pandemic of CARS-CoV-2 called COVID, get, <laughs> causing really COVID-19. Right? <laughs> well, now, here's, a, here's a definition of an epidemic. Anything well, that grabs your attention is an epidemic. Sensitivities to it. So mortality, more people die of heart disease than anything else. So much less than Second is cancer. You know, Three is respiratory so, disease. Uh, I guess the point of that is and there is no four, that is completely safe. In, in, fact, in 2015, no became unintentional injuries from accidental overdoses from taking drugs. Water, so what was interesting is that used to be car accidents, but so while cars got safer, this number went up. This number went from and, four um, to number three. Okay, it tripled see, or almost quadrupled, this, this not just in the U.S., but it's all over the world. So now it is a pandemic. We actually have two pandemics going on at the same time. Woohoo! Just what we wanted to hear, right? Now about 300 people die each year from Tylenol. And I don't now, know the that's that, uh, because people have the, certain sensitivities uh, to it. You can take too much Tylenol, but 300 is so much less than 73,000, you know, so, you know, of overdose. So uh, I guess the point of that is like that, there is no drug right? that is completely well, safe. In fact, you can die of an overdose of peanut butter, so by the way, if you could eat enough of it in a short enough period of time, and you don't have to be allergic to it to die of an overdose of it. You could die of an overdose of water if you could drink enough in a short enough period of time. So it's all kind of time sensitive. So, um, and um, anyway, okay, let me see. I want to get some of this was, this information, and I know I'm running a little bit late, but um, I'm going to keep talking anyway. Now, chronic pain that. is really tricky, and I'm so glad. It's okay, now here's an interesting thing. Till about 2003, pain, pain was not neck, considered a vital sign. Back. But what happened Something was, really and I don't know the agency the that uh, it might have been the uh, the group of uh, pain management doctors lobbied hard to make pain a vital sign. So you know your heartbeat, your respiration, uh, things like that were vital signs, right? Well, they lobbied to make pain a vital sign. So what that did was all physicians, every hospital would ask people, "What level of pain are you experiencing?" And if they experienced over a certain number, they'd give them more pain more painkillers. Most of the time, but I was so, um, in pain. I, I couldn't sleep very anyway, well. Anyway, <coughs> that was you know, probably really, a bad really pain. So you have um, that are now, chronic pain is day. really tricky. And, and I'm so glad as like a dentist I don't have to deal with chronic do. pain. And chronic so, pain would be uh, chronic, chronic pain, pain in your neck, really chronic a, pain in your back, you know, something go, that is really hard to put a finger on. So, I mean, I, I had some neck anyway, pain when I was younger, a couple different episodes of it. And I used to play uh, ice hockey cancer. as a, you know, as an idiot, thinking that I was younger than I was. And so I'd get, I'd get but, clobbered. Uh, and anyway, I had this neck pain and anyway, I came close to way, needing surgery. And I remember saying at the time, man, I wish I had like a big a gash on my neck or some big scab or something to prove that I'm in pain. But I didn't. I looked perfectly on? normal, and I could function perfectly normally well most of the time, but I was in pain. I, we'll I right couldn't back. sleep very well, I couldn't eat, you know, I couldn't concentrate. It was really, really hard. And so you have these people that are living that every day, and they don't look like they have an injury, and yet they do. And so uh, chronic pain doctors really have a, a hard, a tough way to go, I think. I really do. So... Um, Anyway, and until the mid-80s, pain pills were exclusively <coughs> given for chronic pain and cancer. They weren't giving, given for uh, a surgery, say, on your foot or in your mouth. So anyway, and by the way, OxyContin is the synthetic form of heroin, for those of you that didn't know. Okay, um, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about this, and then I want to talk just a little bit about 
what's going on with COVID-19. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, episode 672, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, not just a little bit. I don't know who to be, I'm a paper cup, baby, of the sea. I know you see it too, cause you're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kawiko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model, and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my... My teeth, real ones. Where's my and, glasses? Okay, we're back. We're having a frank discussion about uh, addiction, opioid addiction. And uh, one of the things I want to mention is between 2000, because we discovered we had this problem and we have decreased the number of opioids that we prescribe and making them less available. So those drug givebacks that you hear about all the time where you can you know, anonymously, anonymously bring a bag of leftover drugs, pour them into the little canister, and they promise to set it on fire at, at some point, right? And uh, and so between 2015 and 2017, we decreased the number of prescriptions across the country by 90 million, 90 million less prescriptions for opioid tablets. However, during that same time, the people, the number of deaths went up because of people going to the illegal drugs like fentanyl. Isn't that crazy? Every time I turn on the I don't know that I have the answer, but there's one more question we want to get out there, which is, is it is it uh, a disease? Or is it masks. not? I mean, is it is this a, is this a true disease, or is this just somebody who wants to party hard? Right? Off well, like we I mentioned at the beginning, it actually turns out it is a disease because it changes the way your brain the functions. And once your brain misfunctions and I, or malfunctions, it keeps watching, doing that. Uh, <coughs> so. We have to help these people the get off that uh, carousel of drug addiction, in a while, and, and that's why there are all these help centers. But it just seems like it's almost impossible to help some people because they just get so their brain just gets so fried, if you will. But so anyway, I did want to save a couple minutes to talk about the current pandemic of COVID nineteen. Because every time I turn on the television, whether I'm watching the news, whether I'm watching a uh, scripted show, whether I'm watching a football game. I see people them. wearing their masks they below their them, nose, they to them before, below they their chin, and then having it off completely. The mask on. I like saw one of the coaches matter. run out onto the field Many without his mask completely, on, took it all the way off, off to yell at one of the refs yesterday and one of the games. And I happened to be watching, it was NCIS. Even it if might, you might have been person. the one New Orleans, okay? And I haven't watched any of those shows in a while. And you could s tell time. this show was was uh, filmed after the pandemic the because they were wearing masks. Lunch. Get that. Get this. They and were wearing masks. <laughs> but it also became, to me, a microcosm of the way the reason we're in this pickle. Because both characters had masks on when they were in the building. Somebody walked in the building wearing a mask to talk to them. And I guess because they recognized them and they'd talked to them before, they all took their masks off. And then another part of the show, they had the mask on. It's like it doesn't matter how many times you have your mask on if you ever take it off. If you don't take it off, you're safe. And so are the people around you. Don't take your mask off, even if you know the person, even if it's your brother, even if you work with that person. I tell my people, have your mask on all the way up, covering your mouth and your nose all the time before you walk in the door. Don't walk in without your mask. Leave it on the entire time. Now, they do have to eat lunch, and that's when the only time you can take it off, and I make sure that they are as far at the other opposite end of the table as possible. But people, 
wear your stinking mask and wear it all the way over your mouth and nose all the time. Please, we're never going to get out of this unless people uh, take that lesson to heart. Okay, it looks like I'm out of time, right? I, I'm on the soapbox a little longer than I should have been. But anyway, okay, so don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Dr. Kvitko. Visit my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kvitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. <laughs>